thank you, President. Uh, I want to echo the comments of my colleagues uh, in this debate, um, each and every one of them. Uh, what we are seeing with this bill is Labor and the Coalition engaging in a murdoch fueled cruelty contest. That's what this is. And using dozens and dozens, dozens and dozens of refugees, people who uh, came to this country seeking our protection as political pawns in their contest of cruelty, to see who can have the least principles, who can place politics uh, who can place politics above principle and decency in the most shameless possible way? And, and for, for, for the Labor government, with all the resources of government behind it, to be led, led by the scruff of the neck, by the, the ugliest, nastiest parts of the coalition in responding to this High Court judgment, says so much about Labor. Labor are so desperate not to be seen to have any gap between the coalition that they've become the coalition when it comes to this policy. Like this, this, this act, this bill and the amendments to it, it's not that they could have been written by Dutton. The amendments actually have been uh, written by Senator, Dutton. Senator Shoebridge, I remind <coughs> you to refer to members of the other place by their correct titles. They, they, literally, they literally have been read by Mr Dutton. They've been written by Mr Dutton. He wrote the amendments. To just add that little spice of cruelty into Labor's already offensive bill. This, this is an obscene act against people who just got a little slither of liberty. But it's an even more obscene political surrender by Labor to the coalition. And the coalition must be wondering why they bother having a two-party system in this place. Why don't you just join together? Why don't you just become the one big cruelty party? Have a big cruelty party every time you come here and work out which particular group in society you can be cruelest to together. And this week it just happens to be refugees. They're the part of society the least powerful, that you've just come together to be as cruel as possible as you can be because you think it'll play well with the Murdoch media, because you think it'll play well with a bunch of right-wing shock jocks. Why not just become a single party of cruelty and be done with the pretense? Because that's what it is. And to watch you do this. And, and, and where has the Attorney General been in all of this? I am sure that there are people of good conscience in Labor who are revolted by what is happening notionally in their name. And I feel certain that the Attorney General would be deeply offended by what this bill does and be deeply offended by the amendments, the Dutton amendments that do things like put in mandatory sentencing, because it goes against his nature. But it's one thing to have a private offence at it. What would show courage would be to come out and say it. We just saw 56 members of the UK Labor Party come out and speak against their leader when he was supporting a cruel position on Palestine and Israel, and they took a hit for it. A number of them knew that that meant they had to surrender their front bench positions, and they took the hit because for them it was a step too far. It was a step too far against their principles and their cruelty and, 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 and their views on, 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 on the cruel nature of Labor's policy when it came to that regard in the UK. How could it be that not one single member of the Labor Party here is willing to do the same on this offensive bill? And to just literally take the politics of, of Tampa and the cruelty and the ugliness that that led our country into for two decades, take it, stick it in the microwave and reheat it for 2023? How could nobody in the Federal Labor Party say no to that and publicly take the stand? And where's the Minister Giles on this? I feel pretty sure 
that this offends a bunch of his principles of decency. But it's no good to be privately offended and then publicly back in this cruel system. That doesn't help a single refugee. And that just further drives our politics down Peter Dutton's path. Senator Shoebridge, I've drawn Mr. to your Dutton's attention. Path. I'm drawn to your attention now two or three times. Please Once. refer to those in the other place by their correct title. How, how could you? How could you allow your party, the Labor Party, to be driven by literally the politics of Suella Braverman here? Like that's what you're doing, and not have one of you stand up and say no. Not one single member of the Federal Labor Party has said no to this. Why are you here? Why don't you just join the big cruelty party and make it just a single cruelty party? What's the purpose of Labor if all they do is implement Mr Peter Dutton's ugly policies? What's the purpose? You change the government and change nothing else. The coalition can sit there grinning like Cheshire cats because you are just implementing their policy. And you've done it in like 48 hours after the High Court delivered. They must be thinking, I thought they thought they were in opposition, but it turns out when it comes to this, they're in bloody government. Millions of people voted to move them out, and you've just reinstalled them. Why are you here? If to just deliver what they would have delivered anyhow before the election. Only with little, maybe a little slightly calmer social media spin on it. Maybe slightly less celebratory, but the same core policy. Why are you here? And, and, and when it comes to the mandatory sentencing provisions that you're going to tack onto this, handed to you by Mr Peter Dutton, drafted by Mr Peter Dutton, but delivered by Labor, what does Labor's its own national policy, say, policy platform say about that? Well, the, 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 the publicly available 2021 national policy for Labor says this. Labor opposes mandatory sentencing. In substituting the decisions of politicians for those of judges, mandatory sentencing undermines the independence of the judiciary. It leads to unjust outcomes and is often discriminatory in practice. Mandatory sentencing does not reduce crime and leads to perverse consequences that undermine community safety, such as by making it more difficult to successfully prosecute criminals. That's your own platform. That's Labor's 2021 national policy platform. And what are you doing now? What is Labor doing now? They're about to put in place Peter Dutton's, Mr Peter Dutton's mandatory sentencing provisions of refugees because you think refugees are powerless, because you think it's okay to attack them, and you're willing to even sell your own national policy platform to just have a go at a powerless group in society because it works for you politically. Because it works for you politically to have an answer to a shock jock on 2GB. You just junk your own national platform. And it's not as though we have to even go back to 2021. We recently saw this so-called festival of democracy and the, the, media, the media show, which was for the 2023 Labor National Convention. You all came together and had a draft new national policy platform this year. And you had a pretend little debate about AUKUS as they cared. And then you adopted this on mandatory sentencing in 2023, the same year that you're about to legislate Mr Peter Dutton's ugly little mandatory sentencing provisions on your bill here against refugees. This is what you said, Labor said, in their 2023 national platform. Labor opposes mandatory sentencing. This practice does not reduce crime but, undermines, but, but does undermine the independence of the judiciary, leading to unjust outcomes and is often discriminatory in practice. 
Well, that's true. What Labor said on their national platform is true in 2023 and 2021. What's not true is everything that's come out of the mouth of the Prime Minister about that in the last 48 hours. And what's not true is the offensively false, discriminatory, unjust language that's come out of Labor in the last 24 hours backing in the Coalition's mandatory sentencing provisions for refugees. That's what's not true. What you've said in the last 24 hours, and you know it's not true, and you know it's wrong, and you know it's discriminatory, and you know it undermines the judiciary, and you're still going to do it. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why don't you just join the coalition? Why don't you just make your big cruelty party and be done with the pretense on this? Why are you here? You say one thing before the election, you get elected on a platform, you say mandatory sentencing is wrong, you say it's unjust, you say it undermines the judiciary, and then when you get elected and you finally sit on the government benches, you legislate for mandatory sentencing against refugees. Why are you here? And why do you keep lying to the electorate in election campaigns and then just governing just like the coalition? Why are you here? And, and where is the single member of the Labor Party that's going to stand up for your own national platform? Not one of you. Why are you here? And, and, and to be doing all of this, this festival of cruelty with your mates from the coalition, before you've even read the judgment of the High Court? You don't even have the judgment of the High Court? And you're probably going to just create yet another unconstitutional holy mess and grind through refugees and their families through another unconstitutional holy mess just because you want to deliver in a time frame that suits Mr Peter Dutton? Why are you here? You see, the, the idea that you could craft legislation <clears throat> to address what the High Court has found about two decades of systemic cruelty, the idea that you could provide and craft a, a, a legislative response to it before the High Court has even delivered its reasons is so obviously wrong. You know it won't work, and, and, and you're no doubt being advised about this legislation by the same lawyers that were telling you you were going to win the High Court case and don't worry about it. You don't need a plan B. The same lawyers who've lost the High Court case, who obviously didn't understand the constitutional constraints around executive punishment and cruelty, those same lawyers are no doubt drafting this piece of legislation before there's even the reasons for the High Court to show why they were wrong. And do you seriously expect this next little cooked up piece of executive cruelty will survive a High Court challenge? Because it's not actually even about being lawful. It's not about even pretending to be lawful. It's about delivering a political hit job on refugees because it's convenient to you to keep the shock jobs and Mr Peter Dutton off your back. Why are you here? Why are you here? So, of course we're going to vote against this bill. But, of course... The combined parties of cruelty are going to come together and ram it through without any committee process, without the benefit of reasons for decision of the High Court, because that's what you do. Are there any other, are there any other speakers? Otherwise, I'm going, to, I'm going to give the call to the Minister to sum up the debate.